So now the invoice usually increases accounts receivable, but it's zeroed out. So we're not gonna increase the accounts receivable. All of this stuff is gonna increase a revenue account because that's what the items do. And then the other side is, is instead of going to AR is gonna go to work in process. So we just made a journal entry in essence with an invoice. All right, so let's save and close it. So then if I go back to my reports, we can see then then what happened k paso the work in process is impacted here which is what we want to have happening and i can see it broken out by class because i i assigned classes to it so it's a classy report which gives us a little bit more information if there are multiple uh accounts with work in process in it that's useful tab to the right and we can say okay now over here i've got my revenue broken out this way in March. So it's it's applied to the proper time frame now because I'm saying this is the costs that we incurred in order to generate that revenue. And that's that's basically what we want. That's kind of uh, what we're looking for. We can also do if I duplicate this our profit and loss by class. We could do a classy profit and loss. Let's take this for the whole year 12 31 2 5 and do this for the whole year because then I can see the multiple classes so now you've got the multiple classes that add up that's quite useful when we're trying to analyze like our full job report that's why the classes I think add another level uh, that is useful all right so now let's let's go to the next step and we'll since we'll just continue on here we're going to build the client now so now we're over here this has been done dishes are done dude Sorry, that's in some movie. I can't even remember what movie that is, but I think it had. Anyway, what am I on over here? I'm on the. I'm on. We're gonna bill. We're gonna bill now uh, for the for the next month for the thirty thousand. So this was done, and now I'm on this one. Boom. So let's do that. We're gonna bill them. I don't have much room on my worksheet over here because I don't want to keep going down. So I'm gonna add another worksheet to the side. So to do that, I'm gonna put my cursor, let's put it on P and I need like one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna put it on P, one, two, three, four. And then I'm gonna right click on those columns and insert, boom. And then what I'd like to do is format them like these ones. So I'm gonna put my cursor on K over to, over to N, K to N, and then format paint and I'll put that right here so it widens out those cells. Ah, okay. One, two, three, four. Home tab, format painter. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that looks good. Looks good, okay. So then I might be able to hide these ones. So do I need to hide it? Maybe I'll just keep them there. I don't really need to hide it, I don't think. It's not gonna throw us off. We can see what's happening. So then we're going to say accounts receivable is going to go up because we're just going to build a client. This is going to be an invoice that actually goes out. But the other side, I don't want it to go to revenue this time because this is just one that I want to get paid on and, and, not, uh, and not one that I want to record the revenue because I record the revenue with the other format according to the revenue recognition thing. So this is just going to be paid according to our payment schedule of 30000 because that's what we told the client that we were going to pay them and we're going to stick to that. This isn't a government job that we completely underestimated because that's what you do with those ones. We have clients that are actually want competent work done. It's not we didn't we didn't get it because we know we know some politician or something and that's how we got the job. Any case, we're going to say F2 plus F2 is going to be 30,000. All right, and then the billing down here is going to be F2 plus F2 and 30,000. So there we have it. Let's go and do that over on in uh, QuickBooks. And so we'll just bill the client. So now we're going to actually send out the next bill for the following month in accordance with our payment structure. So I'm going to send out another invoice, but this is the invoice that's actually going to go out to the client. And I'm going to base this one on the estimate that we originally made using our progress invoicing this time the percent will be 30 30 percent 30 percent pulls it in 
Boom, nicely structured. This is gonna be date of 4-1. And you've got this beautiful uh, structure down here of our, of our uh, items that we're going to be invoicing for. Okay, so that looks good. This would increase the accounts receivable for that 30,000 and the other side would be going to the revenue accounts. And in this case, we want accounts receivable to go up. So I need a 30,000 down here, but I don't want the other side to go to revenue. So all of these, I could like replace these with one line item that doesn't go to revenue, but I kind of like the detail of having these line items here. So I'm just gonna say, reverse that back out with just a, like a little journal entry at the bottom here reduce the revenue for the total amount of negative 30,000. And this is gonna be class number two. And then I'm gonna put the other side into where I want it to go, which is the billings account, the billings account, boom. And that's gonna be for 30,000 and job number two. <clears throat> so now it's still gonna increase accounts receivable because I have a balance down here of the 30,000, but the revenue is still gonna go up by these amounts but also right back down. So the detail will have this and then minus this and then back down to zero. And then the other side will go where we want it to go, which is into the billings account. So let's, that's the plan at least. Let's save and close it and see if that is indeed what happens. Let's go to the balance sheet to check it out. And we know that then the accounts receivable is up to the 30,000 that looks like it should right and then the other side went into the billings account which is here sorted by class which is nice because because now if i had multiple items in the billings account i could sort it by class here or i could go into it and sort it by customer in the detail report if i wasn't using class tracking and i can sort it this way in order to sort it this way by the way you need a customer name field and if you're using journal entries, you might not have a customer name field and you won't be able to sort this quite as easily likely. Okay, so I'm gonna go back on over, go to the go to the revenue. So we didn't recognize revenue with that one because we didn't wanna recognize revenue based on that. We wanna recognize revenue based on when we, when we earn it in, in like a percentage of completion kind of conceptual concept. All right, now let's just, re assume that they pay us the accounts receivable that's why we sent them the invoice in that format because it's easy for them to turn around and pay us with it and that would just simply be cash goes up and accounts receivable goes down and that would be for the thirty thousand. so let's do that i'm going to say f2 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 and then this one is going to be f2 plus f2 30,000. We record that one out. Accounts receivable goes back down, goes into the checking account. That's a straightforward transaction. No, no funny business happening here. Straightforward. So we're going to go back on over and say we just received a payment 15 days later for that invoice we just sent out to the client. Let's bring it up 15 days. And we'll say it goes into the checking account. This is a received payment. So it's gonna be increasing the checking account and the other side's gonna decrease the accounts receivable. Save it, close it, check it out. Tab into the right, scrolling up, running, running it, accounts receivable goes down and the checking account uh, goes up. That is it, I think that is it, all right? 